Hi everybody, welcome to Green Bites. This is our May lunch and learn. So I've ho I hope you've got your lunch. I hope you're ready to learn. This is gonna be about invasives, uh, local invasives, how to identify some of them and how to control them where you find them. So we are gonna be going over some equipment, the equipment we're gonna be using today, the equipment that we have in the office and how to use it, what those uses are, we're going to be going over uh, some of the invasives that we have on this piece of property, which is uh, a lot of the common ones that you will probably find in your yards or landscaping. Uh, and we are uh, going to be talking about how to use herbicides safely and effectively to get rid of invasives. My name is Morgan Sheeter, and I am the Natural Resource Specialist for the Warwick County Soil and Water Conservation District which is the host of these Green Bite videos. Uh, and so I hope you enjoy today. If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat. Uh, someone will hopefully be able to get an answer to you uh, while this is running. All right, so we've got some of the tools here that we're gonna be using today. These are also tools that we have in the office that are available for use. Uh, so these are all rentable. Uh, equipment that we have in the office. You can find uh, a list of some of this equipment on our website at warwickswcd.com on our rental equipment page. So I'm going to, we don't have uh, our entire tote here. I just brought some of the stuff that we are going to be using today, uh, but I'll give you just a little rundown of everything we have. So we have hand clippers. So these are really good just for the small, uh, some of the small stuff, or if you've got vines like Asian uh, honeysuckle, these are really good for trimming into it. Even multiflora rose, cutting into that so that you uh, don't uh, get any thorns, you can use these little trimmers for that. We have got medium clippers that do the same thing, uh, but a little bit bigger. And then we have uh, some really large trimmers uh, if you've got some thicker trunked invasives that you want to get rid of. Uh, so these are also available um, with all the others. We've got, uh, so some of the stuff we brought today to use is we have this uh, herbicide um, and we're, I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about that and some of the ways you can use this techniques for application. Uh, but a really important thing is if you are using herbicide or if you're mixing up a certain percent of herbicide or if you're adding dye to your herbicide you might want to get some vinyl uh, or other uh, plastic gloves just so that you can uh, stay clean when you're using that herbicide and you won't accidentally dye uh, your hands um, or get it all over your hands as well whenever you're applying it you should be okay uh, with uh, any kind of glove but you want to make sure that you're wearing a glove um, when you're doing a spot spray and you're not using a lot of herbicide, that's completely fine. If you're doing a lot of spraying uh, over a large area, you might want to go ahead and wear some vinyl gloves or other kind of gloves like that just to uh, keep your hands clean. And then we're going to be talking about this later, but behind me, uh, we've also got our Pull-A Bear, which is another piece of equipment available in our office that you can come grab. Um, and it's going to be good for uh, some of those uh, middle of the road invasives, the ones that are too big to cut with the clippers, um, but not so big that you might need a chainsaw. And then we don't have it out here with us, but we also have a backpack sprayer available in the office. So that is uh, a way that you can apply herbicide over a large area very easily. You can fill that backpack up and it's got a wand out the front that you can spray um, large areas or you can patch spray a particular area of your landscape. All right, so this piece of equipment that we have here is called the Puller Bear. Not a Polar Bear, but a Puller Bear. And that is because we use it to pull uh, saplings or other invasives that you want to uh, bring the whole root out, something that is uh, maybe bigger than uh, you want to just cut it, but smaller than uh, a full tree or something like that. Uh, so these work really well with uh, saplings. The reason I say that is because the trunk is going to have to be thin enough that you can actually get it in this piece of equipment here. So this bottom part here is the main part. 
it's got this wrench head on the top right here and then these two boards that help you get the leverage on it. So what you wanna do is when you've got it on the ground, you're gonna use the big lever to open up this wrench to close around the trunk and that is what is gonna give you your point of leverage to pull that sapling up by the roots. So if I set this on the ground, you can see if I move the lever forward away from me, that's opening up that wrench there, like a wrench head. That is where your trunk is gonna set. So if you're pulling an autumn olive sapling, uh, the trunk of that sapling is gonna go right in between these teeth here. Once you've got that opened up and you've got it around that trunk, bringing back on the lever, so I'm pulling the lever back towards me, is gonna close that wrench once that wrench bites, then it's going to stop pulling it uh, closed and you're going to start pulling up with that lever action and you're going to be pulling up by that trunk. So you can imagine if I've got that trunk closed in that wrench head, once it's shut all the way on that trunk, I'm going to be pulling backwards still towards me, pushing down towards the ground at the very end of my lever and that is what is gonna give you the power to kind of pull that sapling up by the root. So this is an autumn olive. Uh, this is an invasive that we have here uh, in Southern Indiana. So one way, uh, one real easy way that you can tell uh, that this is an autumn olive is if you uh, flip the leaf up, you'll see a very shiny, uh, almost like the bottom of the leaf has been spray painted uh, with silver spray paint. Uh, it shimmers in the light as well. It's got a very shiny texture to it. The autumn olives also have uh, alternate leaves, which means they uh, go every other rather than being opposite from each other. So alternate, they go every other on either side of the branch. And they kind of have this uh, smooth margin with ripples along the edges. So if you're looking at that, if you're looking at the plant and you see that silvery underside, very shiny, spray painted underside, then you know you've probably got an autumn olive. So once you have found uh, the invasive that you are pulling with the polar bear. Uh, the polar bear has got that wrench head on it, so you want to get the trunk uh, in between those wrench uh, teeth so that you can get the leverage to close that and start pulling. So sometimes you got to get a little finicky with it. You got to make sure you get the trunk up in between those. And then occasionally when you're wanting to get that leverage, if you want to get it started, you might have to put some pressure down on the head of that wrench, the very top part just so that it, we can start getting that close on the trunk. Once you've got that, you want to use your leverage, push down on the big lever all the way at the end. That's going to give you the most leverage when you're pulling up on this. And you may not get it all in that first go, so see we've lost one of our trunks there. So you might need to move. So autumn olive, it's one of those that shoots up multiple trunks. So it's not quite as easy as your normal sapling. Get some of that leverage up. Now we've got the rest of that root, that main root come out with it, and you pulled up your whole plant. So we've got another invasive here. So this is a white mulberry. Now here in Southern Indiana, there's also a native mulberry that is called red mulberry. This is a white mulberry, which is invasive. You can tell one of the ways to tell is that the white mulberry, which is the invasive, it has a smooth leaf underside so it might be hard to see on camera but these leaves are smooth underside if this was a native red mulberry they would be hairy on the other side so there'd be hairs you could see them and you could feel them if you touched with your finger uh, one great way to tell that this is a mulberry is it's got all kinds of different leaf shapes 
Uh, sassafras is another one that we have around here that's got different leaf shapes on the same plant. But you can kind of get a good example of all of the different shapes of leaf that uh, one mulberry can have on it. This is all the same plant. All right, so we are going to be getting rid of uh, this white mulberry. Uh, we are going to be doing a cut stump treatment on it, uh, which is going to be using herbicide. So uh, right now we're out in the middle of May. You want to make sure that you uh, aren't doing this technique too early in the spring uh, when sap is running. And that is because we're going to be spot spraying that herbicide directly into the trunk so that it goes down into the roots and kills the plant uh, from the very bottom down. So I've got my clippers here. We're gonna clip this thing right at the bottom and then I will get the herbicide. all right now that that is trimmed we've got the cut stump right here with that exposed side we don't want to leave it for too long because the tree is going to start immediately bandaging up that injury so you want to make sure you do this pretty quickly after you cut you don't want to wait like 30 minutes anything like that and that's because it will develop a film over top and none of your herbicide will actually get down into the plant. So what I've got here is a triclopyr. So that is a pretty heavy herbicide. Uh, it's a little heavier than glyphosate. It's mixed to an 8%, but remember whenever you are using herbicide, you want to follow the label uh, as closely as you can, okay? Because that label on your herbicide is a legal contract that you wanna follow. So I've got this triclopyr here, it's mixed with some blue dye, and that is so after I spray this, I know that this stump has been sprayed. So I made sure to get around these edges for sure, because that is where the actual herbicide is gonna be able to go down into this trunk and into the roots. And I've covered it enough so that I can see that blue dye that we've got mixed in with our herbicide. So the herbicide doesn't come looking blue. Uh, that is a blue dye that we've added. And you can see that this is going to start soaking in down into the tree. It's going to start pulling it in uh, through that xylem and phloem that trees have going down into the roots. And it is hopefully going to go all the way down and kill that root. If we had just left this after trimming it, it might have been able to send up some shoots still from that root base. So using this cut stump, you're going to limit how much herbicide you're using. So that's going to save you money. You're also going to limit how much herbicide you're putting out into the environment because it is only going directly where you want it. So hopefully none of this herbicide is going to be flowing out into any of the surrounding grasses because I've used so little and so specifically that it'll only take out what I want it to take out. We've got some more invasives here. So uh, we've got both kinds of invasive honeysuckle that's in our area. So this one right here, it's gotten pretty tall. It's more bushy um, and very woody. Uh, this is the uh, bush honeysuckle. So this is an invasive. And you can see how this is uh, getting more to a tree status than anything else. A very woody uh, plant. This one we would probably uh, do a cut stump treatment on, uh, just like we did to that mulberry. Um, because that, that woody trunk, it's gonna be hard to get that herbicide in unless you are spot spraying, uh, just like we did before. You can see on this bush honeysuckle, uh, it's just recently flowered, you can see the tiny um, little remnants here of those buds and you can see that it is a opposite leaf plant so that means that the leaves uh, come off of the stem directly opposite each other uh, like how your arms come out directly across from each other at the shoulder 
different than the alternate leaves that we looked at before. Then down here that's flowering, we have Asian honeysuckle. And you can see right now this one is very viney. It's coming up in here. It's flowering right now. It's the middle of May uh, when we're filming this. You can see that here. So this one uh, you would probably want to spray, but it is not gonna be a one and done for this honeysuckle. You are gonna have to spray this multiple times uh, to fully get rid of it. And that is just because it will uh, come back like crazy. Very resilient, invasive in our area. This is that Asian honeysuckle. It also has opposite leaves where they come out right across from each other at the stem but they are easily confused because this plant will wrap around itself. They cluster, so you know, it looks like there's four leaves coming out right here, but this is actually just two vines with the opposite leaves right next to each other. They come out at all different angles. They're all twisted up. And so don't be afraid if you are uh, wanting to get down into this, you really wanna get rid of your Asian honeysuckle, don't be afraid to trim a little bit you can trim, you can pull this out everywhere that it's tangled up and it can uh, just help you figure out maybe where that plant is actually starting at and coming from and it'll give you a better idea of where you want to spray uh, or uh, give you a better game plan on how you want to tackle this vine. Then right next to that honeysuckle, we have not an invasive but actually a native Virginia creeper. So this one is confused a lot with uh, poison ivy and you can kind of see why. So this right here, this is all a part of the same uh, creeper vine here, but they've got uh, five leaves, three leaves. So if you're seeing this, you might see that three leaves and you might think, oh, that's poison ivy, but not in this case. This is actually Virginia creeper. So you can look for uh, other areas where those leaves are coming out. And this has, uh, we say, a palmate leaf. Uh, and that is because if you look, especially at this five uh, leafed vine right here, you can see that that is kind of like a, a palm of a hand with the fingers coming out uh, all around it. So we say that is a palmate uh, leaf shape with those leaflets. We've got another invasive right here that's poking out. This is probably one of my least favorite invasives, especially when I am out um, removing them from an area. This is Multiflora Rose. So we missed its bloom. So you can see there's some, you can see uh, where there were some flowers on it. This one has a white flower. We've missed it now. Uh, and then you can see too that it's got these opposite style leaves coming out either end and one of the most obvious features is the horrible thorns all over this plant which can make it really difficult to pull out when you're working with multiflora rose you want to go from the outside in very carefully so don't be afraid to trim real small pieces at a time uh, because when you're getting those bigger pieces, you're reaching your hand in, trying to figure out where the main uh, trunk of this, uh, of this um, plant is coming up, uh, and you're going to get covered in thorns. You're going to lose your glove, um, and you're going to be covered in scratches all over because it really picks up really easily um, all over this plant. For this one, if you can pull it up, then you should pull it up by the roots to get rid of it. If you can't, because it is just too bushy, it's too thorny, or you can't get into it, um, you can always trim it down to figure out where that main trunk is. You could do a cut stump on this with herbicide, where you cut the very bottom uh, and you spray so that it goes down into the root. Um, or you could spray this uh, like you would the Asian honeysuckle that we talked about. Um, and you would have to do multiple sprays again because it's not gonna uh, lie down easily. Uh, but if you can pull it up by the roots, then go for it. Just remember to be careful with those thorns anytime you're working. Uh, you might want to get some gloves that have a, a harder um, covering rather than just a pure cloth glove if you have a lot of these very thorny invasives on your property. 
Thank you for following along with us today while we worked through uh, how to identify some common invasives and some good techniques on getting rid of them. Uh, if you have any questions uh, or you want to learn more about invasives, if you go to our website, that is uh, www.warwickswcd.com, uh, you can find our invasive species page on there. There's a lot of information on a lot of the common ones. I think all the ones we talked about today are on that site. Uh, and there is information about uh, why they're harmful, how to identify them, how to control them. And there's even some native alternatives on there if you uh, don't want to lose that aspect of your landscaping you can maybe find some natives that are going to be able to fill that spot uh, where you pulled the invasive out. Uh, so uh, thank you guys for joining us today. Um, we we'll hope to see you again next month at the next Green Bites.